Hello and welcome back for another video. This is Learn Microsoft Fabric. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at Dataflow Gen 2s, which is part of the Data Factory experience. We're gonna be seeing how we can use it to extract and transform and load various data sets and data from all different types of sources. And if you're a Power BI developer, you might have used data flows previously. And so don't switch off just yet. I've got some interesting stuff to show you about how data flows in Fabric allow us to do some pretty interesting stuff that you can't do with Power BI data flows. So let's get into it. So first, let's just understand where data flow sits within the Fabric environment. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, then obviously you'll know we've got six or maybe even seven experiences of which Data Factory is the first one. It's, well, it's the one furthest on the left, which is good enough for me. Inside Data Factory, we have two different options. We have the Data Flow Gen 2 and the Data Pipeline. Now, the Data Pipeline, I'm going to be creating more videos on in the future. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed and they'll be coming very shortly on this channel. Okay, so when we talk about a data flow gen two, really what are we talking about? Well, there's a few basic concepts here. We're talking about Power Query. So if you've ever used Excel Power Query to get data into an Excel spreadsheet, or Power Query is also prevalent in Power BI, and also in data flows in Power BI as well. So that's the kind of the interface that we're looking at here. And when we talk about data flow, really it's an ETL tool. And by that we mean extract. We can extract data from external sources and files and really lots of different places and can bring it into our data flow, our Power Query environment. And once it's in there, we can build a sequence of transformation steps. Maybe we want to clean the data, remove columns, uh, filter the rows, do all sorts of different transformations. In fact, there's over 300 available transformations in a data flow in Power Query. And finally, we've got the load. So we want to output our data, our transform data somewhere. Now, this is one of the key distinctions between a Fabric data flow and a Power BI data flow. In a Fabric data flow, now we have options for loading our data into Fabric items, like a data warehouse or a lake house or a KQL database. Now this makes, in my view, data flows a lot more useful. So that is a very high level overview. Obviously it's built on top of Power Query, and it's a low code experience. So yes, we can write raw Power Query, but most of the time we're gonna be using the interface. And this is what this looks like here. So here is an example of a Power Query interface. Obviously now we're gonna, first we're gonna be talking about the extract functionality. So how do we get data from a different various sources into this environment so that we can do some transformations on it. So to get data, obviously click on get data and get more. And what I'm going to do is just browse through the different options and the different connections that we have. And immediately you can see that there's loads. There's a lot of connections here. In fact, there's a lot more connections here than you get in the data pipe pipeline experience. And that's because these are, have been built up over time as part of the Power BI product, which is a very business facing product, let's say. So in the connections, you see lots of external SaaS products, lots of different things like Autodesk Construction Cloud and all these different plan view and smart sheet. And you don't get these options in data pipelines. So that's one of the core differences. Another core difference is the ability to load local files in a data flow. And that's something you can't really do in a data pipeline. They have to be stored in Azure or somewhere like that in a data pipeline. But in a data flow, we can get data from pretty much wherever. And it's quite good 
for the integration with SharePoint. So if you've got data on SharePoint, it's a good option. Obviously, the kind of the core stuff is the databases. And in this version of data flows, the fabric version, now we can get data from everything in fabric. So our warehouses, our lake houses, our KQL databases. So this makes it really, really useful as a general purpose ETL tool within the fabric environment. Some of the other connections, obviously we have Azure, everything in Azure is accessible. And the other thing to mention is some of these other ones. So we've got OData, ODBC, we've got Web API. So if you want to do REST API connections, then that's um, a good option for you there. And you can also get HTTP, like get scraped data from a, a web page, but never actually used that one. Now we can do all sorts of transformations. And like I said, there's over 300 transformations available here. And some of the main ones are filtering rows, removing columns, uh, replacing values, replacing errors if there's any, you know, trimming strings. Lots and lots and lots of transformations. And I'm sure there's lots of videos about that on YouTube already, because this is a kind of well-established product power query inside data flows. So I won't be going into that detail here, but just to understand at a high level, maybe you've been working as a data engineer in Azure and you've never really seen this. It might be useful to know because you might want to use this for a basic transformation. And so we can apply lots of different transformations. I've got an example here. And it stores these uh, list of applied steps and you can step through the different steps to understand what the data looks like in each of these stages. So removing columns, expanding columns, changing the column type, renaming the columns, and that is really how we build up this logic. And then every time our data flow refreshes, it will go through these steps and output the file to the output destination. Which brings us to the final point, which is the load. So as you can see down here in data destination, and it's also available up here, but it's already, I've already created a data destination for this one. We can specify what the data destination is for our load functionality. Where do we want this data set to end up? And that can be anywhere within your workspace. So it's limited to the workspace. It can be any of data factory, a lake house, and anything like that. So that's a very high level look at the three ETL steps that make up a data flow. So who is it for? Well, obviously, probably the most comfortable people will be Power BI developers. You know, you've probably used this before and it's very, very similar, if not identical, apart from the data loading functionality. And the other people I would say who this is built for is, is business users. This is low code. This is very simple. Like anyone could build a data flow, I believe. It's very intuitive once you understand the different transformations. You don't really need to do any coding at all. If you don't want to, you can do, but you don't need to. So I say it's also suitable for business users. And finally, maybe a bit controversially, I would say data engineers, because although they have access to Spark and data, note, uh, data engineering notebooks and data pipelines, for some things, I would say this Power Query experience is a lot simpler to use. And you might just want to do a quick and dirty transformation, build a quick pipeline, maybe you're testing something. And that can be done very quickly within a matter of minutes, rather than having to build code for these pipelines. Maybe that will be the, the final solution, but you, maybe you want to just quickly test it and transform some data, get it into a data warehouse so that your Power BI developers can, can look at something. So how does this compare to the other tools that are available for ETL? Well, we've quickly mentioned the differences between the Power BI data flow and the Fabric, but just to reiterate, in the Fabric experience, we can load into a data warehouse and a lake house and a KQL database. 
And that might sound like a very small thing, but it allows us to do lots of really interesting stuff. So the differences between a data flow and a data pipeline, well, in a data flow, you can do a lot more transformations in the native tool. In data pipelines, you can orchestrate different things, different notebooks or a SQL script or a stored procedure. It doesn't have any native functionality for transformations, really. Another key point is around the connectors, which we've mentioned before. The data flow connectors, there's a lot more of them and you can do local files as well, especially if you're connecting to SaaS products, you know, your HubSpot or your Salesforce. It's got loads of connectors all, all like that. Data pipeline was built mainly for professional kind of data engineering tasks within the Azure environment initially. So a lot of the connectors really only, they focus on the Azure environment really. And how does it compare to a Synapse data notebook, a data engineering notebook? Well, obviously the data engineering notebook is gonna allow us much finer grain tuned experiences with data engineering. You know, if you're doing quite complex control flow logic, looping through different files, doing all sorts of things, then definitely the, the data engineering notebook, notebook is the tool for you. And if you're doing big data, so if you've got millions or billions of rows, you definitely wanna be leveraging Spark because data flows can be a bit slow based on what I've seen. And I've seen an article and I'll, I'll show you that in a second, a really interesting article actually. It doesn't perform as quickly as either the data pipeline or the data engineering notebook for loading and transforming data currently. And finally, I just want to mention the Power Automate flow. So if you're a Microsoft user, you might have used these as kind of that if this, then that type tool. And it's not really a tool for ETL. You can do some ETL with Power Automate, but data flow is really for like I say, getting data, transforming it and loading it, which is quite difficult to do in Power Automate. But the similarities are you can schedule these pipelines to run at every day, every morning, every hour, whatever it is. You can set these schedules and then you can monitor those schedules. So some of the limitations we've touched on already, it's slow for really big data sets. And I read this really cool article by Sandeep Pawar of Fabric.Guru. So if you're not following this, then make sure you follow it now because there's loads of articles. Every few days, there's cool new stuff being written by this guy. So shout out Sandeep. And this point here really took my attention because we're talking about Delta write time. So he's taken a really big data set and he's trying to load it into one lake through different methods. Data flow gen two, took nearly nine hours to ingest this data. And it was a big data set, but that's quite a lot. And as uh, Sandeep says, we would expect this to get better, hopefully, before general availability, but it's just something to bear in mind if you've got very big data sets. The incremental refresh is not yet available. So this is something that is available in Microsoft Power BI, in the Power BI data flows. You can do incremental refresh where it will only take the latest data or the updated data. And that kind of helps with speed of these refreshes. So that's not yet available. And some of the things you have to bear in mind if you want to output to a lake house is, well, special characters and spaces within column names. We can't use that in Delta Lake format, so that doesn't work. And some of the columns that you might expect in traditional uh, or if you've been using Power BI, like the duration and the binary columns aren't supported yet. So that's a very quick run through of Fabric data flow Gen 2. And that was a very high level overview. We've talked about what it is, who is it for, how we can use it at a high level and some of the limitations. Now in the next video, I'm going to be going hands on into the tool and doing a real world example about how to transform data flows, specifically within the context of Fabric. I'll be showing you some cool stuff, so make sure you're subscribed. If you enjoyed this video, then I'd be very grateful if you gave it a like and leave me a comment. How are you finding these videos? Is there anything you want me to cover in the future? Thanks very much. See you in the next one.